Hello and welcome, today's video comes from sunny Greece, the birthplace of democracy, the Olympic Games, and a total pathetic excuse for a man. Caroline Crouch was born in the UK, then moved to the Aegean island of Alonisos with her parents, British-born David Crouch, and Filipino mother, Susan Della Quester. She lived with her husband, whose name is on the screen now, as there is no way I can pronounce that. He was also called Babas by his family, so that's what I'll call him throughout this story. The couple had a young daughter, Lydia, and lived in Glykernira, a suburb of Athens. Caroline began a relationship with Babis in 2017, when she was just a teenager and he was 30. It didn't take Babis long to pop the question, and they quickly married in 2019. Their daughter Lydia was born a year later, in June of 2020. Caroline was a student at the University of Piraeus, and her husband was a helicopter pilot. To everyone, they seemed to have the perfect marriage. On the 11th of May 2021, Babas told police officers that he and his wife were asleep in bed when burglars broke in at around 5 a.m. He said they were looking for cash and valuables. The gang tied Babas and Caroline up before asking in a broken Greek accent, where's the money? He said the gang sounded Albanian and that they could not speak fluent Greek. Babas told the gang that they had around 10,000 euro stashed away in a Monopoly game box, the money was to be used to buy a piece of land and to pay for building work that had been done on the property. He said he told them where the cash was, thinking if he complied with what they wanted, they wouldn't hurt his family. However, the cash was not enough for the gang and they demanded more money. They then threatened to kill the baby by pointing a gun at her head. Caroline started screaming at this point, and the intruders then strangled her to death, ignoring Babasar's screams, begging the gang not to hurt her. The gang then killed the family dog by hanging it from a fence with its own lead, then fled the scene leaving Babas tied up on the floor. He is believed to have suffered hypoxia, a potentially fatal lack of oxygen, before wriggling himself free to get to a phone and dialing a neighbor with his nose. Police found Babas handcuffed with duct tape over his mouth and eyes, he'd also been gagged with a sock. Caroline was found dead after being tortured and suffocated. Her 11-month-old daughter was found alive beside her body. Babas gave police a description of the gang and he underwent a listening test to see if he could identify the language the gang were speaking. He also looked at photo lineups with the hope he could recognize one of them. He chose 10 photos from a list of 150 that resembled the intruders for police to follow up on. Police put up a £250,000 reward for information. But there was no DNA at the scene and all police had to go on was a shoe print found outside the window where they got into the house. A month went by and police could find no trace of the Albanian gang. It was like they vanished into thin air. They then started looking a bit closer to home and look into Babasar's version of events again. Police noticed discrepancies in Babasar's story, he claimed he was tied up the whole time, but the step counter on his phone showed him moving around the house at the time he was supposed to be tied up. Also, when the home security system was checked, police noticed the data memory cards had been removed at 1.20 am, causing a camera blackout. Police also found a diary written by Caroline, detailing how her marriage wasn't as happy as it seemed, and the bitter fights the pair had. In fact, she was planning on leaving him. One entry, written in December, 2019, whilst she was pregnant stated, I fought with Babas again. This time it was serious. I hit him and cursed at him, and he broke down the door. I'm thinking of leaving. Another, on July 3, 2020, 
just after her daughter was born, said. Today, my baby is one month old. It's also the day I told Babas I want to leave. I feel awful. But the biggest piece of evidence that police had was the smartwatch the Caroline was wearing on the night of her murder. At 3.58 a.m., Caroline's heart rate is that of someone who is fast asleep. Seven minutes later, her pulse increases 50%, showing someone in a state of alarm or panic. At 4.11 a.m., the smartwatch recorded no pulse from Caroline. She would have been dead at that point. With all the discrepancies, police decided it was time to interview Babas again. Police traveled to the island of Alonisos, where a memorial service was being held for Caroline, and Babas was attending. He was photographed, hugging the victim's mother Susan, at the service. Police asked Babas to follow them back to Athens, as they had a suspect to identify. Little did Babas know, the suspect was him. Police questioned Babas for eight hours, and initially, he stuck to the story of the intruders killing Caroline. But when shown all of the evidence they had against him, and the discrepancies in his story, he finally admitted to killing Caroline. The police captain who arrested Babas said that he smiled like he was on a cruise ship when he was charged with her murder. He told detectives the relationship had been very stormy, and when she said she was leaving him, he flipped and strangled her. He said he staged the robbery in order to make it look realistic so he could stay out of jail and look after his daughter. He also admitted that he strangled the family's seven-month-old puppy and then hanging the dog from a post by its lead. It takes a real piece of shit to hang a puppy, I hope he rots in jail. Police described Babas as a top-class actor, pretending for 38 days to be devastated by his wife's death. Friends of Caroline's parents say they are so shocked by their son-in-law's betrayal that they haven't been able to face the walk to their daughter's grave since the funeral. They had given Babas 20,000 euros just 10 days before he murdered their daughter and then over 4,000 euros to cover some of her funeral costs. Babas is being held in custody, charged with Caroline's murder without bail. He attended court, surrounded by police officers, wearing a bulletproof vest, as the story has caused outrage in the country. Women also took to the streets to protest over the number of women killed by their partners in Greece. They held a candlelit vigil in Caroline's memory. Now, the fight is on to see who will take care of baby Lydia now that her mother is dead and her father is in custody. She was in the care of Babas's parents in Athens, but a judge has since ruled that she should be in the custody of Caroline's parents. A prosecutor must decide whether she stays there, goes to stay with Babas's parents, or be placed into child protection services. This is a poor excuse for a man, he attacks women in their sleep and hangs puppies. I really hope he gets the same treatment in jail. This next video comes from California and tells the story of Angelina Rodriguez, the woman who loved a bit of insurance money. This case comes from sunny California, the home of Hollywood, beautiful beaches, and a crazy woman. We're taking a look at the case of Angelina Rodriguez. Angelina Rodriguez was born on May 31, 1968. She was raised in a working-class neighborhood of Queens, New York, with her sister. Their father left their family when they were young, and they were raised by their mother, who worked as a nurse. But as their mother worked long shifts, it left the girls open to the worst kind of abuse. Angelina's sister confirmed that both girls had suffered terribly in the hands of their grandfather when he came to babysit. This would continue into the girls' teenage years. Angelina first attempted to take her own life at eight years old with painkillers. 
she would try again on numerous occasions during her childhood. This would lead to Angelina being diagnosed with depression and anxiety disorders. At age 20, she enlisted with the United States Air Force and then later joined the Army National Guard. She was also a devout follower of Christianity. So devout that she often cried when she prayed. Angelina's early life showed that she was divorced three times upon entering the year 2000. Each of the marriages lasted no longer than a year. Her second marriage to Tom Fuller resulted in her having two children, Autumn and Alicia. Unfortunately, Alicia died at the age of 13 months due to a faulty pacifier. The nipple part of the pacifier had broken off and got lodged in Alicia's throat, suffocating her. More about that later. In February 2000, Angelina started working for Angel Gate Academy, a boot camp for wayward youth, operated by the California National Guard in San Luis Obispo. It was there she met her fourth husband, Frank Rodriguez. Frank was the oldest of six children from father Jose Francisco Rodriguez, who was a doctor, and mother Janet, who was a lab technician. His father was a jealous, abusive husband with a drug and alcohol problem, he later deserted the family, leaving Janet to raise the children alone. Frank went on to join the Navy, where he met his first wife, Judy. He was married for 14 years, but the marriage would eventually fail. When the marriage fell apart, he became a teacher for troubled children, eventually ending up working at the Angel Gate Academy. After a whirlwind romance, Frank and Angelina quickly married two months after meeting, in April 2000. Frank later landed a teaching job at LA Unified School, and the couple moved to Montebello. For a time, they seemed to be happy newlyweds, but things were about to change. In the early morning hours of the 9th of September 2000, police were called to the Rodriguez home in North Maconi Street, Montebello. Angelina Rodriguez met police officers at the door and led them to her husband, who was lying in a pool of blood on the floor of the couple's bedroom. Although they didn't know how he died, police were immediately suspicious of his wife's strange behavior. Montebello police officer Stephen Sharp recalled later. When you deal with someone in this situation, they are usually very upset and they don't want to talk to you. As soon as I began speaking with her, it was as if she had forgotten about what was going on. And she was hardly crying. I may have seen some tears, but there was a great lack of them, and, as soon as I would talk to her, or ask her a question, she would immediately snap out of it, and answer the questions real quick. In my experience, usually someone who has just lost their husband, they are difficult to speak with, and communicate to. It also emerged that Angelina had taken a $250,000 life insurance policy out on her husband just after they were married. And she telephoned the insurance company within 10 minutes of police investigators leaving the scene, trying to cash the policy in. Unfortunately for Angelina, the insurance company wouldn't pay anything out until a post-mortem was completed and a cause of death was established. An autopsy couldn't establish what had killed Frank, who had been fit and well all his life. With the exception of food poisoning symptoms a few days before his death. Blood samples and normal toxicology tests revealed nothing out of the ordinary, and as a result, no determination was made on the cause of his death. Which meant no death certificate would be issued, and Angelina wouldn't get the big insurance payout that she was expecting. It was at this point that Angelina started to pester investigators and after a series of interviews, she told detectives that Frank probably would have committed suicide. Then she started to push the blame onto Frank's co-workers, claiming that they had poisoned him with oleander and antifreeze. Oleander is a shrub that commonly grows in gardens and beside roads and is highly toxic. Oleander poisoning can affect the heart nervous system, stomach and intestines, eyes, and skin. 
After Angelina's claims, detectives ordered additional toxicology tests, which, when they came back, showed both Oleander and Antifreeze in Frank's system. Angelina Rodriguez was immediately arrested. After speaking with Angelina's friends, it emerged that she had twice, unsuccessfully tried to murder Frank. The friend told police that Angelina was unhappy in her marriage and wouldn't divorce Frank because he had a $250,000 life insurance policy. The friend also said that Angelina had heard a story about a woman that tried to kill her husband using oleander tea. Angelina tried this, which resulted in Frank being admitted to hospital with abdominal pains and suspected food poisoning. Frank was released from hospital after a few days when his symptoms eased and he started to feel better. After that failed attempt, she tried tampering with gas taps in her home, then leaving to visit a friend, hoping the place would explode when Frank arrived home. When Frank got home from work, he could smell gas, so he left the house and called a repairman. Angelina would have been sick at this point, no money, and a husband that just wouldn't die. It was when a friend told Angelina about a dog that was poisoned with antifreeze that she hatched a new plan. Third time lucky. Angelina decided to put antifreeze in her husband's Gatorade, which would result in a slow, painful death. After detectives charged Angelina with Frank's murder, they decided to re-examine the death of her 13-month-old child, Alicia, who had died after part of a pacifier, got stuck in her throat. It was then uncovered that Angelina had a $710,000 settlement in her daughter's death after filing a civil suit against the manufacturer. But a prosecution expert testified that medical records indicated that Rodriguez broke the pacifier herself and pushed part of it into her baby's throat to suffocate her. Angelina also had baby Alicia's life insured for $50,000, making it a big payout for her. She was never charged in relation to Alicia's death. But we all think she done it, don't we? Three years after Frank's death, in the fall of 2003, Angelina's trial began. She was charged with first-degree murder, attempting to dissuade a witness by telephoning her and trying to get her not to testify. She was also charged with trying to get a fellow inmate to murder the same witness for an alleged $20,000. Prosecutors presented baby Alicia's case to the jury, and although she was never charged with her daughter's death, this evidence was presented at her trial to show that Angelina's motive for murder was financial. Prosecutors also showed how Angelina had on multiple occasions tried to claim insurance money from companies. She accused a fast food restaurant of sexual harassment, target of negligence, after she slipped and fell in a dressing room, and when she was arrested in February 2001, investigators say she was preparing to sue her landlord for asbestos poisoning. In October 2003, Angelina Rodriguez was convicted of first-degree murder, murder for financial gain, and attempt to dissuade a witness. She was not convicted for the charge of soliciting murder. On July 12, 2004, Angelina was sentenced to death by lethal injection. Los Angeles County Superior Court Judge William Pounders stated that she killed her husband in an exceptionally cruel and callous way and that her guilt had been proved to an absolute certainty. In the past 20 years, he had never seen a colder heart. Despite the conviction and being sentenced to death, Angelina always maintains her innocence, claiming the poisoning was suicide. The $250,000 insurance policy tells another story though. Angelina Rodriguez was awarded a new sentencing hearing in 2010, but was resentenced to death. Her most recent appeal was denied by the Supreme Court of California in February 2014. Angelina remains on death row at the Central California Women's Facility in California. No date has been set for her execution. 20 of the state's 747 inmates on death row are women. Executions have been on hold in California 
because of lawsuits challenging the constitutionality of California's death penalty. Is Angelina a baby killer? Should Babas get strung up, like he did to that poor puppy? I think he should. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, see you in the next video.